See you in the next part. <laughs> yeah, a bit too late for that. <laughs> Tilting head down. Tilting head up. What's happening to the... Okay, I didn't get a good glance at it, but I mean, it was that the mesh on the genie's arms was weirdly, like, merging or something? Yeah, maybe. Hmm. And I think I actually did a bit of an editing error here. I forgot to edit this out, but that's fine. Because there's actually something that now we can check out in Aladdin's house. There's yet another giant-sized keyhole in here. Because of course there is. I love the fact that characters just plug or laser a key into a keyhole, they don't actually turn it. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's how key... Like that's, if that's how keys holes actually worked, that'd be like the worst security system ever. Like, you wouldn't even have to worry about lockpicking, you just put a metal into like the keyhole, and then boom, door open. <laughs> well, technically the keyblade is supposed to be like a giant skeleton key that is weaponized. Like, it can open any locked chest door or thing in the world. <laughs> But it's kind of interesting how you don't have to turn it when you put it into a keyhole. Yeah. Anyway, so these are like fun guys. They are pain in the ass because they, they deliver poison and they can turn us off to stone, which makes them impervious to any sort of damage. Oh joy. They do give a lot of experience. Like most enemies only give like about 10 experience at best at this point, but these guys give 98, 96 experience. And honestly, as long as we got healing powers available, which we do, they're not too bad since this poison is actually slow acting and their attacks don't deal that much damage. Unfortunately, the party members were not designed to handle poison so well, so they go down in a flash. As they ineffectually try to hit the enemies while they're dying of poison. It's also now canon that Aladdin is weaker than Goofy. <laughs> Well, technically, he actually is stronger, it's just probably he's had some bad luck with the... Yeah, I think it's because he has less HP than Goofy has. But yeah. on that, he has higher strength and defense, I checked, on his stats. Generally, any party member that are in these worlds are stronger than both Donald and Goofy combined. Well, not ah. combined, but generally are stronger. I think it's probably because that Goofy has his shield, so he can block most of the attacks. Well, Aladdin has to take the trump of all the attacks, like Donald. Ah. Yeah, so anyway. Yeah, I know that I forgot to mention another enemy that we fought earlier, but that was kind of a poor representation, so we'll get to that later. Anywho, back to more plot. Setting your sights a little high, aren't you, boy? Back to your hole, street rat. I will not allow you to trouble the princess anymore. Jasmine! I'm so sorry. Also, get used to Alan going all over the top when it concerns please, Jasmine. Help Jasmine, please. One wish left. You're making this really easy, you know. <laughs> so this is a poor sorry, use of boy. wishes. I'm afraid your second wish is yeah. denied. The film would have been so much more different if this is how wishes were granted. Oh? Yeah. Like, I think one thing that they mentioned, like, if I have rules to wishes, like, you couldn't wish someone to love you, you couldn't wish someone dead or something. That didn't bother to tell. Oh, and now, I bid you all farewell. Attack! Ooh. Yeah, so this is actually a boss fight, as you'll see right there. This is the Pot Centipede. It's kind of an interesting boss fight because it used the Pot Spiders as, like, bits, bits of its body, so it makes a giant centipede. Yeah. Now, it's not really too complicated of a boss, but it can be a bit tough because there are various of pot spirals all over the place, even things outside the pot, the pot centipede. And for some reason, the back of the pot centipede has just split apart from the, the front one, for some reason. They're supposed to be merged together. Oh. Yeah, so they'll just keep on tagging. They will be separating from the rest of the bodies. You can take out the individual pots. To make the centipede shorter. Now, if you do attack the various the front or the rear, it will actually start attaching. They will actually start dealing a damage with their antennas or whatever. The front will deal, I think, electric, and the other one will deal dark attacks, I believe. So, if you attack them while they're contacting you, you have to be careful of that. 
other than that, it's not too difficult. Just have to keep in mind that they'll keep spawning pot spiles everywhere. Like, also, apparently, they, this battle, the entire map is open to us. We don't have to go for Lunar Speed to get to the other map parts. The only area we can't access is the desert. Which is a bit interesting. Yeah, <laughs> just love of Jasmine still screaming that she's inside the pots. <laughs> so keep doing it for the rest of the battle, it's kind of humorous in a way. Well, I mean, the whole concept itself, in and of itself, is quite neat. <laughs> yeah. It is kind of... It does kind of get tedious after a while, since you keep running into pot spider after pot spider after pot spider after pot spider all across the map. But yeah, the, the, the centipede doesn't have too many pot spiders anymore. But that doesn't stop the map from rolling in more of them, so... Now fortunately, when you do manage to split apart the centipede, it will actually drop HP orb, so you can recover health in that way. Sorry, Jasmine, Aladdin's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is it's kind of chaotic after a while since you keep having enemies spawning left and right and everything. And this is where I pull up a dick move where it gets on top of those platforms which you can't jump up to yet. Oh. But they fortunately get to jump down eventually, but that was certainly a wonderful waste of time. And that was a close call, but we managed it somehow. I think at this point we basically cleared out most of the pot spiders, so we don't have to worry about them too much. A lot of the fights in... sadly a lot of the fights in... Agrabah are kind of tedious like this, like, but it does get worse. You'll see later, though. For now, we are almost done with this guy. Although, I swear, I think they must be spawning like pot spirals whenever you they run low on, so they can keep the centipede thing. Anyway, I think at this point, we're all I'm going to finish it off in a moment. There we go. We got extra MPs, we get some extra MP, and we got a lucky strike which increases the drop rate for items. Ooh. And we got a ray of light which increases the MP we can have at the mo total MP as well. To the desert! Come on, let's move! And so we go back to the desert, to the place we were before. And here comes a very obnoxious battle that's gonna come up have it help us. Oh joy. <gasps> Gasp, no surprise shown on the face. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Textbox, for telling us what the heck is going on. I mean, I find that helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the tiger head is a son of a bitch, as you will see in a moment. Because right now we have to attack its eyes. Problem is, we can't reach its eyes right now. Uh. It, will, it will try to do this projectile attack, which can reflect without any too much issue. And they don't deal too much damage. But the problem is, the projectiles, if you do reflect them, won't necessarily reach the eyes. Uh. The problem is actually, the actual problem is that they will occasionally spawn enemies by these breath attacks. And these enemies can be actually quite, uh, quite a hassle since they spawn a large number of these. And then, as for you finding it, you might not realize that it's actually open to jump onto it and attack its eyes. But if you realize it, you might already miss your opportunity and have to wait for it to sink down again. So... 
you have to take out both its eyes, and that's not the easiest thing to do since you can easily fall off this thing if you're not careful. Ah. So this ended up this ended up taking a long time for me to do. So I have to speed this up eventually. Fair enough. Yeah, so this is like sped up about four times. And those are Bat Bandits, cleverly named. And Fat Bandits are like the large enemy some some four. Except they can breathe fire, and in fact they have two fire attacks. One where they breathe a gust of fire, one they breathe fireballs at you. And the fireballs you can actually deflect. Uh. And as you can see, this fight took forever. They keep spawning, they like, they like, the tiger keeps spawning enemies, so you keep getting distracted by them, and you can't really fight them. And if you take them out, you have to wait for it to actually. wait for it to get down so you can actually reach towards it and you can attack them. And yeah, this is hell. Yeesh. Like, imagine how long this would have taken if you actually went to the full pace. It would have been agonizing. I bet there's actually playthroughs out there which do show fat boss battles like this just completely unedited in full. Yeah. Ooh. Or I could have just been doing something wrong, but I don't know. I wouldn't put it behind it, though. Anyway, yeah. wait, come. Welcome to Cave of Wonders. It's not at all wonderful. It's another. Uh -huh. If you thought Agrippa was claustrophobic, this is a claustrophobic clusterfuck. And not only that, it has a section of the map which you can fall onto to a cavern of mazes. Oh. Yeah. I mean, you have to go there at some point. Also, there's boulders. Oh. Yeah, welcome to the mazes. It's filled with water, you can't, and another thing about water is that you can't jump out of it. You have to go to somewhere climbable to get up there. So that's gonna be wonderful. We get that Thunder Ring, which is not very useful because we already have better equipment for everybody. We can direct these statues though to unlock new paths. I don't think these are really necessary, with exception to getting a few treasures to get across here. And yeah, this is going to be a fun place to explore around, try to find all the treasures. Although certain abilities we get later on in the game will make it a lot easier to get navigate these places. At the moment we don't have those, and I wish we had. I really wish we did. So that opens that, but we can't reach there because we can't jump that high, so that's wonderful. So I'm going to go back to actually proceeding to the cave of not wonderful things at all. It's mostly because the... The cave of tedium. <laughs> yeah. It's mainly because they keep spawning enemies in such small areas and a lot of the nasty ones. Like the fat bandits aren't too bad once you know what to do handle it, but the bandits with the swords and other enemies that they spawn can be really nasty, especially with the number spawn. Like the, like the flying soldier there. The flying soldiers are nasty as hell. They're like the regular, regular soldiers and bandits, except they can fly, so they can attack you from up above you, but you can't reach them. And again, I died here because... Well, you saw, see, you get to see all the things I have to deal with. Oh jeez. Yeah. These guys aren't too bad, but the later ones get kind of intense. Yeah, these guys. Again, the air soldiers are relentless. Yeah, you see, that guy just swooped out of nowhere and you couldn't see where it was. I was lucky to dodge that one. And that's basically a good description of air soldiers. They come out of nowhere and destroy you in a few flat seconds. Anyway, so here's its flame attack. And annoyingly, whenever it does its flame attack, it will face towards you, regardless of where you are, for when it starts breathing it. So that's very... so it makes it kind of tedious to get behind them. And just in case you didn't notice, you can only attack those enemies from behind or the side. You can't attack them oh. from the front. So they keep facing forwards whenever they do all their attacks, which is seriously annoy annoying, because that means you can't hit them. Ah. And because their, their flame attacks makes you face towards you, that makes it even more difficult to hit them. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think there are in the later games, at least not the tedious least. There's still the large body variants which doesn't have the flame attacks, but those are more manageable since all you need to do is learn the tricks and figure out how to easily handle them. Like here we are behind them and then whoop! 180. I see. Fortunately if you go jump up up to the head, you have an easier time hitting their sides or back. So that's a that good thing. It. That fat enemy would be really good at 360 no scopes. <laughs> Just Time. snap 300 degrees. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> yeah, now we're just gonna get some treasures around here. We can't open a treasure chest in this game while enemies are around. We can in later games though, but for now we have to wait, defeat all the enemies if we want to open them. Which is kind of annoying, but oh well. Anywho, Nick, to the next part of tedium. Fortunately, I don't think it's as bad as the other one, but at least for this early part, because they used to have a pot virus and typical. I don't remember. Uh, we had shadows. Those are called. Get a shadow. So I use typical goon by enemies. The only gimmick is that they can, they, they can sink into the ground and become completely untouchable, but otherwise they're completely harmless. And the pot spider was just there before I could open the chest, so that was wonderful. Now here comes the nasty ones. Two bandits and one fat bandit. Now I almost did die here, as you'll see in a moment, because the fat bandit has a really nasty attack, which should come right here. Oh, whoa, yeah. Yeah, you can actually affect those attacks if you, if you time it right, but yeah. Oh. Yeah, tactical retreat time was in in good favor here, I guess. I kind of panicked there and just figured, no, I don't want to get a game over. I won't, don't want to do this all over again. Out of curiosity, um, do the uh, ways of enemies reset when you fall down into the pit? No, so I have to go for them all. I again. don't think so. I think if you go to, I don't often think it would have said if you go to far away from the current area, but if you go to adjacent room and come back, it'll keep the same amount of enemies as before. And we got weeded by a sword to the face by this bandit here as soon as we entered the room. Which is wonderful. But we are almost at the end of the place now, so the place we need to go to is actually beyond the pillars here. But the problem is the pillars are blocked by well the pillars itself, so we can't pass it. I want to clear out the enemies and take care of some treasure chests, one which is of great importance. Well, the actual treasures we can't... Most of the treasures we can't reach to because they're too high, we can't jump that far. There's nothing to latch onto either. But this one is... irreachable. And it consists of defense up. Which will put on Sora because he needs all of the defense up we can get. <laughs> These statues are pointless, we can't do anything with them. And I just show you that you can't go take any of these, so that's one... that's... something. Well! Guess you have to go back to the maze to explore some more. Down we go. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's not that bad actually. Every we actually supposed to go is like not in there. Because it just takes us back up. But it's actually the area we need to go to is actually beyond here, so it's it's not that bad of a maze, but it definitely is kinda of tedious to navigate because of the water. And the fact that you can't really jump too well in the water. So that's the thing blocking us from the Progressing in the in the treasure room, so we have to do is not fall into the water like a dumbass. We have to hit it with a keyblade, and boom. And of course, it's the perfect moment to start some more plot. My first wish, genie. Show me the keyhole. Yep, so now we go back all the way to the treasure room and get on with the plot again. That boy again? He is more persistent than I expected. 
Why not explain the situation to that boy, Riku? Doing so may actually prove useful to our... Wait a second. Are you Maleficent? Jafar! Hi. Black Jasmine, go! <laughs> Not a chance. You see, she's a princess. One of seven who somehow hold the key to opening the door. I love to say somehow, like... Oh, like, yeah, we, there's what no reason why they do, so these do. Just. But you fools won't live to see what lies beyond it. Genie, my second wish, crush them! <gasps> Genie, no! Sorry, Al. The one with the lamp calls the shots. I don't have a choice. Yep, so here's Jafar. And he's a pain in the ass, as you'll see in a moment. Because his gimmick is basically running away like a freaking coward, as we'll see in a moment. There we go. He turns into turns into an orb and then just flies away. And yeah, you'll see in a moment. There he goes again. And that's basically the whole fight. You have to chase after Jafar every single time. He feels like running away. While the genie, you basically just freaks out with the fact that he has to hit you. And fun fact is that if 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 the genie actually hits you, he'll drop HP orbs for you. Oh, yeah. But as I just edited out most of the fight that consists of running around and try to showcase like some of the lines that genie says when he tries to hit you, since some of them can actually be kind of funny. Please, oh, please let me miss. <laughs> yeah, you see. So yeah, I would have speeded it up, but I did want to preserve the lines, which I think was worthy of showing. But yeah, just imagine the Belly Hills theme playing for the most of the battle, and you got this whole fight summarized. But yeah, he mostly uses cast various spells, and he's not too much of a threat at this point if you've gone through all the other things. Just to you keep chasing him whenever he feels like running away, and because that's always good game design, chasing the enemy across the entire room. Yes. If I recall correctly, there's actually um, a Disney game that is built entirely around it. There's a, there's a game called what's it? Buzz Lightly Lightyear Star Command, released on PlayStation oh, One, yeah. which is literally just about you racing to like a boss arena and then just beating up a boss, and that was every level. <laughs> I think I should play that game, actually. Oh, I mean, it's quite short, if I've seen anything about it. Um, yeah. And anyway, we almost... we about to finish up our nap. Finally. <laughs> I don't recall how long this battle was, but I cut out a lot of just running around in circles. Anyway, here, here we get an upgrade to our bl blizzard spell. And because Final Fantasy, our improved spell of uh, element it has an A on the end of it. So Blizzard becomes Blizzara. My final wish. I want you to make me an all-powerful genie. I don't see how this could go wrong in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Especially if you, say, haven't seen the film. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right, so you, leave him. Yeah, so if you check on Jasmine, game basically tells you you have to go after your power, blah, 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 blah. Oh. go jump down. So we have to go down and fight him. Fair enough. I'm sure she'll be fine after the whole thing. <laughs> right, so 
this is not really a boss fight at all. You just you have to chase after the lamp all the time that Iago is holding, and that's basically it. You have to chase, so it's another sh Benny Hill chase battle here. <laughs> As Jafar is actually not that much of a threat, he'll just toss boulders and stuff, and that's it. I mean, you could have played like some, like an 8-bit rendition or, oh, you know, something that isn't the original song and you probably could have gotten away with it. Yeah, but, I don't know, I, I think I'd rather just save the adding, adding music for like stuff like the Colosseum and such. Ooh, fair enough. Yeah, the platform there is a bit wonky. Like, it's supposed to be completely inside there, but you can still grab onto it. But because there's no platform to jump to, you can't jump up there. And at this point, something actually interesting happened. At this point, Yoga actually lost stamina and he actually leaves the lamp there, so you can just go ahead and wallop up on it. Oh, nice. It drops like HP and mana orbs, which are not really that useful because this isn't really much of a challenge at all. Jafar is the only threat and Yago doesn't attack any at all. So, there's no real need for this, but it's at least good to be able to just deal good damage to the lamp. And there we go. And we learn Lead nice. Racer. Leaf base allows you to heal yourself without taking any damage whatsoever. It's essential. If you're playing this game, hmm. equip it as soon as possible. If you don't, you're in for hell. Okay, Jafar. Back to your lamp. Tornado spin! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> And now we get an upgrade to fire, and now it's Fyra. Because. Fyra, because. Final Fantasy think it's clever. <laughs> no, it's how Final Fantasy thinks spells are stronger. You put an A in, in the end of everything instead. <laughs> what if you put a B at the end of it? Does that make it more powerful? <laughs> no, you put a guy in the end instead. Jasmine? Yeah, Fire Jasmine? is cool. Fire A is cool. But have you tried Fire Z? <laughs> <laughs> I do like how in the background that Alan almost actually looked like down in the sand pit over there. Like I would have loved it if just 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 saw him jumping around the background while we're doing this. Just looking for the Jasmine. You just see him get stuck in quicksand like when you first find Aladdin. Yeah. My eyes! I can't see anymore! <laughs> Look at those low texture gold coins. Ooh. And of course, being a Karen, we have to have him make it collapse. Get out of here, <laughs> nah, just leave it's, her to die. It's, it's, no, Jasmine is actually missing right now, so we'll see that later. I just kind of love this scream. It's like it reminds me of like the heavy rain. Calling out for Jason or Sean. <laughs> it's like it's not like press X for Jason, like press X for Jasmine. Oh my god! Yes. Anyway, so the escape sequence is kind of simple, but kind of tedious. You have to keep dodging obstacles, and that's it. You can swing your keyway, but that's kind of a stupid idea because that requires precision timing. So just keep dodging and doing barrel rolls. Just to confirm, this is real time, not sped up. This is real time. Jeez, because of that cave section, bloody hell. Yeah. Unfortunately, they do put up health orbs so you can recover health. And magic orb, despite the fact you can't use any magic for some reason, so... Shrug. And despite that, we can go go back to the Cave of Wonders and it'll be completely, perfectly fine. Because who cares about consistency? <laughs> Not Kingdom Hearts! I can guarantee you that. Which kind of makes sense, considering the fact that there was a crap ton of spin-offs between Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3. <laughs> yep. Which I'll be getting into. As, oh. as, mean, as many as I can get, at least. <laughs> so... Uh, Earth to Al? Hello, you still have one wish left? Look! Just oh gosh, this is gonna be plot Ask convenience. Me to find Jasmine for you. No. To bring Jas- teleport Jasmine I, here. I wish 
for your freedom, genie. No, we can't because morals. No. Oh yeah, because this is based on the film. Yes. A deal's a deal, Genie. Now you can go anywhere you want. You're your own master. But if you can, it'd be great if you could go along with them and help Sora find Jasmine. In fact, the said he couldn't bring you along because that would be meddling. Sorry, Al. I'm done taking orders from others. But a favor? Now that's entirely different. I guess I could give that a try. After all, we're pals, right, Al? Genie. You ain't never got a friend Leave like copyright me. strike. <laughs> <laughs> That's not until Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So we can't bring around Al then, but we can't bring around Genie because who cares about consistency? <laughs> like, seriously, you bring about Pig Genie as a summon. Despite the fact that the meddling thing is supposed to be you can't bring around characters outside the world. Simba is an exception because their world was destroyed and they were stuck inside a gem. But Genie is actually in the world right there and it's perfectly fine. One should be aware of letting it burn too fiercely. Whoa, whoa, what now? I'm as cool as they come, okay? By the way, kid, have we got something special for you? Huh? We had a deal, yes. You help us, and we grant you your wish. Oh, who is that? I don't know who that is. I've never seen that person in life. I wonder if that person I ever met before is. Oh, wait a minute. Go to her. Your <laughs> like literally you triangle missing. <laughs> <laughs> literally, like five seconds you're staring at her before you realize that was your friend that was disappeared. It won't be a pleasant voyage. Why are you doing all this for me? What's the catch? Catch? What's the catch? Silly boy. You're like a son to me. I only want you to be happy. I seriously doubt that. Believe what you wish. But lest we forget, I kept my end of the bargain. Yep, so now we... Yeah. We get the genie summon spell. Something we won't be uh -huh. using much anyway, but I'll show it off at least. And we get the keychain for the free wishes. We can now change our keyblade. And we get the green trinity, which we'll also show you just in a moment. And as well as something else that's been neglected to be shown. So green trinity is basically used a giant tower of these goofballs. This allows us to access this ladder in the accessory shop, which allows us to get to up to the synthesis shop. And synthesis is basically like the crafting of the game. You gather materials from beaten enemies and you can make items into them. So we've actually been collecting a good bunch of various of items that we can use for this. And only now have we had gotten access to actually make use of them. And since this is the way you make the best weapon in the game. So, but that's gonna require a lot of grinding and I'll see if I can go get to how to do so, but no promises. And they keep track of what item is created and yeah. Anyway, in this chest is one of the Dalmatians, apparently the Moogles were keeping them hostage. Because one of the side quests is that the, that the Dalmatians were all scattered across the worlds, and you have to find them in the treasure chests. And if we return them, we get varying degrees of rewards. And here's the summon spell for Genie. Oh, so it, okay, so it does turn the key, never mind. And yeah, you, you cannot skip these at all, so that's wonderful. Anyway, so how Genie works is that you can lock, he lock, you lock him into enemies to tag them with Genie symbol, 
and then it goes in town with them whenever you press the triangle button. Nice. It's a pretty good attack actually, but but yeah, it, it you can only use these summoning spells once, and once you use them, that's done with. And that's the end of that. Thank you for joining me, Ben. Right. Uh, th thanks for inviting me on. Don't know if I'll be um, participating in any future uh, commentary sessions on this game, but uh, considering how silent I am due to how little I know about uh, Kingdom Hearts or even some of the Disney classics... You're, you're extending but, uh, the video far longer than it should be now. It's already went way over. Who cares? <laughs> Goodbye. Good call. Good point. Who cares? Goodbye.